Hey, everybody. Um, I am Matt Winston, co-founder of Stan Winston School of Character Arts. I'm joined by Eric Lidoff, co-founder of the school. Say hey, Eric. Hey, hey. Welcome, everybody. Uh, also, Stan Winston School uh, head of production, Jake Borowski, is here. Hello. Hi, Jake. Uh, and we are all very honored to be joined today by some Stan Winston Studio veterans. We have Jim Sharmatz. Hi, everybody. And Terry Wolfinger. Hello. And Styles White. Hi, everyone. These three gentlemen, in addition to many, many uh, contributions to Stan Winston Studio, helped to build the Stan Winston Creatures website, which was the website that was built to support and promote the Stan Winston toy line. And over the next little while, we're going to take you on a tour through that site, and we're going to hear how it all came together. So why don't we jump in? Uh, Jim, you can go ahead and share the home screen. We'll start there. And there it is. There's the home screen. Why don't the three of you just chime in and talk us through what we're seeing here on this home screen and some of the design choices that were made and, and all that. What do you recall? Well, let, let's go to the uh, launch here. So this is what happens when you load the page for the first time. That's our splash page. So basically it's showing everything that Stan wanted to show through the Stan Winston Creatures company, the action figures, the comics that were connected to the figures. He promoted his uh, big character track that was the launching of the digital company. So it was beyond it was beyond just the action figures, as you mentioned. It was the uh, the graphic novel, the comic books, all of this really original IP that Stan was developing with the help of you guys and the rest of the folks at the studio. So can, before we move into the, the various you know zones, um, Styles or Terry or or Jim, do you want to talk us through these these three things we're seeing? There's the check out our latest action. You want to talk us through each of those things? Yeah, I'll jump in real quick. You know. The origins of a lot of, of the action figures, to be honest, was um, when Stan was producing the creature feature films. So they were these original films that were remakes of 60s kind of drive-in movies. And Stan was producing updated versions, modern versions of new filmmakers, new actors. And one of the ideas was to do more like figurine model kit figures of the creatures from those movies. And that got the wheels turning of continuing that and branching out into original action figures. A lot of them were based on concept designs that Stan had come up with and the artists that had come up with in the studio that, you know, feature films that had never been produced. So now being able to produce action figures out of those. And I think the studio had just done small soldiers. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of experience with these smaller size, cool characters. And that was really the, the origins of it. And I know the track figure and sort of the mutant earth characters were first out of the gate, as long as the realm of the claw characters that were based on these two concept designs that Stan had done a long time ago. And, we built other characters around those two main brothers, the good and the bad, and you know, built a kind of a whole fantasy world around those characters. Uh, and that, and it just kept snowballing from there. It went into werewolves and gargoyles and all kinds of other cool genres that Stan wanted to explore. Right, and and the the comics were based on his original sketches that he'd done so many years ago. The and that was for Realm of the Claw. But once Track was introduced, Track was a character that lived through time. So so his whole thing was that he was a monster hunter, and through all time he he ran into all the mythical creatures and characters. And that was that was kind of like the the base of not just the comics, but for all the supporting characters in the toy lines. So it was it was pretty neat idea to do that because you had infinite ideas that you could throw in there. He was the one who would bop between the, the various 
uh, worlds that were presented in these in these toy lines. Yeah. Um, I actually have something here. I'm going to show because it it's right here. Uh, this is actually where it all started. Uh, this this sculpture uh, back in the gosh early 80s late 70s. This cat character mm -hmm. was the genesis of the whole realm of the claw world. Mm -hmm. um, and then that led to uh, other IPs, but it did start with the realm of the claw. That's cool to see that. Yeah. And who did that sculpture? That's that's Stan. So let's dive into this various sections, Jim. Uh, where shall we start? All right. Well, the action figures was was the you know first thing, and Stan wanted to show all that off. So here we have a page where you can see the the different series, and and they were in order of release here. So you could hover over each button and see the characters that are in the toy lines. And then we had a little sneak peek into future toy lines here, which uh, with Robot Revolt hmm. and the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. So yeah. the first line of toys was creature features. So he wanted to promote the tie-in to the films that were done for HBO and Cinemax. Terry, I know you were very heavily involved in the, in the designing of the of the website, design elements, and styles more focused on writing. Right. And and uh, can you tell us a bit about your recollections as you're seeing some of this stuff? Um, yeah, well, I created a lot of the elements, like the background element. You know, that kind of spooky hallway. I created the art for that. I think we took the eyeballs from the Stan Winston Creatures logo mm -hmm. that, that Jim created, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, just, you know, kind of tried to come up with clever ideas, how to load the, you know, clickable frames and stuff like that and tie it into the same world. And like on the figures thing here, that's that's like a tie into the studio website, right? So right. That's some of the same elements. We, we wanted it to kind of feel cohesive with the studio site as well. Like this was the offshoot, but mm -hmm. still felt like it was part of the same world. And so when you click on one of these characters, I don't know if we did it on this, but was, was, there, was there also on some of the figures where there 3D spins? Yeah, that's later on for the uh, behind the, the action. scenes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this was the first series that came out. Obviously they were based on the film. So we had, we could write little mythologies and cool things on the side with the text, but this was, this was the very first <clears throat> run at kind of a test test drive of figuring out how to do action figures how to do the toy production to really get them to look great with the with the paint job so there was a lot of we would get test runs that would come into the studio we would give notes um how to improve different parts of the of the paint jobs because having them look as close as possible to the original maquettes was really important to stand but then it was just it was also a lot of fun because you know, some of the first digital cameras were coming out. So a lot of these composite shots, when you click on the characters with the cool backgrounds and everything, we were shooting those against little miniatures and models and then mocking in atmospheric backgrounds and things like that. So there was a learning curve to all of this as well with some of the new tools that were available to us. Right. A lot of the guys who sculpted the figures actually built these really amazing little sets. Yeah. The, the scene, like the jungle scene here, you know, that was actual set that you could move the camera around and get these great angles. And, you know, that's real light shining through some filters. And yeah, that's why these things look so great. Uh, and and uh, Stan gave real sense of ownership to, to each of the art artists for these figures to really t take it all the way through the process. And I, I, I wasn't aware that those same artists were also working on the little settings that their figures would be in. That's so cool. I had yeah, no Chris, idea. Christopher Swift did uh, a lot of the setup and background stuff for the photography. And then uh, Chuck Slotnick was, was the photographer. So uh, working in tandem, they were, they were creating these really neat backgrounds and then, you know, Terry and I shared the 
the logo designs and other graphics, you know, enhancing these backgrounds and enhancing right. all the photos at like the little smoke coming out of the gun and, and things like that. So, you know, it was a big team effort just trying to get the, the coolest of the cool. How now, much of the coolness was captured in camera and how much of it was a Photoshop work that you guys had to do? Yeah, you know, it depended on the on the shot. Like some of them didn't, didn't, didn't meet, meet as much, but you know, these were in conjunction with the packaging and the accessories that came with the figures. So, well, okay, let's start at the beginning. The, the creature feature stuff only came with a DVD or a, a, a CD ROM. CD ROM. Never mind, right. never mind DVD. It was CD ROM back then of behind the scenes stuff. So, it was all designed in Flash and and animated and and stuff like that. But subsequent to that it became online uh, website behind the scenes that uh, you could access even more information. And then um, all the toy figures had trading cards mm -hmm. and really cool boxes. So, you know, we were just doing tons and tons of, of art and it, it was, I mean, you could do a whole behind the scenes just on that stuff. So and yeah. so these images, Jim, remind me, were these the trading cards that were in the packages? I think so. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure, I, or, or at least, very close. Yeah, Direct, I, don't, um, I don't think they were the same images because you know we wanted the trading cards to be totally uh, unique. To, yeah, right. unique. So, but, but similar. So, so maybe from similar, the same yeah. photo shoot, but at a slightly different angle or something. right. So, and we also uh, the the three of us, Jim, Terry, myself, we were all there we did a big showing at the San Diego Comic-Con mm -hmm. and we had a big display set up with the dioramas of all these characters. And we had a lot of these little set elements that you're seeing these backgrounds and had them set up along with some of the characters from the display room. So we had the full size Indo skeleton there and we had the full size predator. And I think I remember for San Diego, we printed up some track posters Kind of some large uh, yeah. 11 by 17 posters. It was Realm of the Claw posters, I think. Right. And we and had we had backlit uh, lights and, uh, you know, yeah. a, whole, a whole series of stuff. Yeah. Stan hung out in the booth for almost the whole time, you know, for hours and then would go do panels. And I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of people came through that booth for over those four days that we were there at um, Comic-Con. And actually before that, Jim, the two of us went to Chicago for the, right. Wizard, for the Wizard World convention and Stan flew up for that. That was also a big show. I remember at the Chicago convention, uh, cause unlike San Diego where a lot of celebrities and people could drive down from LA, getting to Chicago was more of a, an effort and not everyone would come out. And I remember it was a really big deal that Stan had come out for it. A lot of people were excited to see Stan and, and have him sign, you know, Jurassic Park DVD sleeves and posters that we had printed up. So it, it was really, you know, before you could do things like this, do a, a live Q and A on Zoom, you had to go do these things in person. So. Chicago and San Diego were definitely two like amazing live events that we got to be part of. Do you remember the reaction to the actual toy lines themselves? That people were taking photos nonstop and asking questions. And it was a, a big reaction because it was also kind of people got and it, It's what Stan wanted to do from the get go. People always wanted to have a little piece of something that had come from the studio. And this was a way that you could get at an affordable action figure price, get a little piece of the, the creativity and the, you know, the design concept out of the Winston studio. So there was a lot of excitement of people being able to get these. That actually reminds me, you mentioned small soldiers earlier. It did start with small soldiers. They created a limited edition, one-to-one -one scale versions of chip, and um, Arch, the problem was they were so expensive. They were like 5,000 bucks each or something like that. They were at FAO Schwartz. 
yes, it was all the original artists and you could get a piece of Stan Winston studio, but it was just too expensive. So right. yeah. when, when Stan saw what Todd McFarlane would, was doing, raising the bar of toys, that's when he saw it would be possible to bring that level of artistry to a more affordable toy figure. I think he was there at the uh, Wizard World. I went to a few of these, not those two, but a few conventions with Stan. And I, I, it gave me a whole, many things that I saw him do, gave respect. But he sat there and signed and shook hands and talked to everyone until the line was done. Yeah, he didn't leave. And it was a just such a remarkable thing. And this is pre whoever's going to see what we're talking about here. You guys are oversimplifying the work. I know because it seems, you know, very simple to you. But this was cutting edge going from a toy to a CD rump to the website, having a full circle of the story, sometimes comics, sometimes trading cards, the whole thing. I mean, it was very, very innovative. It was a very innovative way, a very innovative time. You guys were always on the cutting edge of that. And this work on the website is just I'm sitting here remember because this is about kind of timing when I came through and it was remarkable to watch what all you guys were doing. You're making creatures over here, but here's an entire new function in business and something that Stan really did like to do, you know, work on different projects. But that one thing always stood out, those conventions, he just stayed till the end. Every time shook every last hand. It was so remarkable to watch. Yeah. Well, and also looking at a lot of these characters and looking, thinking of Mutant Earth, uh, especially and like the gargoyles i mean we were creating everything so matt you were talking about the you know letting the artists really have a, a sense of ownership with the characters we were coming up with their names their backstories the the color schemes everything and so i remember specifically with the names sometimes the artist would come up with a really cool name and sometimes we would just brainstorm literally with lists of names and and if it sounded cool it worked and you know i was looking around through my files but i mean we had like this name zephyr I, you know we just it, it had a z and a y in it it looked cool <laughs> we didn't know what it was but, but it was literally like just playing word games until something kind of looked cool on the page yeah. and uh it fit the characters like yeah. that's boring do you mind uh, t- talking a little bit more about the storyline? Because that's something I do remember as well. And you mentioned it, that the artists did get to participate in the ones that did participate in story from concept to the actual story. And if their stories made it onto the boxes. You know, I think with a lot of them, we were just, you know, the sense of who the character was. We, we wanted it to feel like what, even within any grouping of action figures, whether it was Mutant Earth or the Gargoyles, that there were good guys and bad guys, there were rivalries, there were, you know, you can even see with in the faces, some of them are more sympathetic, some of them are more purely evil. We were just trying to come up with as much content and ideas and story as possible that we could fit on the back of the packaging, in the trading cards, stuff to put on here on the website, and it's why like all of those backgrounds and the lighting schemes, every, every, we wanted everyone to have a, a unique feeling or a tone. So it wasn't just the paint job, it was the backgrounds, you know, creating a sense of atmosphere around it. And then we would just, like Jim was saying, this was a full-time job. We were coming up with storylines and ideas and maybe how two characters had an old rivalry, but someone else was a good guy. And and we fed a lot of that to the comic book writers that we were working with. And then they would use that, create outlines. And that's, you know, the issues of the comic were, were born out of that. So I think I had left by the time the Four Horsemen storyline was coming along. So these are really cool to see. I'm not as familiar with these guys. They were never released. Right. They so, made it only to the Comic Cons is coming soon. And then... Uh, yeah. Same with Robot Revolt, right? Didn't that never, that, yeah. Never, yeah, and there were other lines that um, were just behind these that figures were made, but they were never even put on the website because uh, it just it never got that far. Mm-hmm. It's important to point out that all of this was Stan's backdoor method for hopefully getting movies made. 
Uh, right. For years, he had been pushing uh, uh, the the cat story lot story, which is what Realm of the Claw was based on, trying to get the movies made, trying to get the movies made. Of course, getting a studio to spend you know a hundred million dollars on an unproven IP very difficult, yep. but. To, to get a comic book made a fraction of the cost of getting a movie made, to get a toy figure made the same. Yeah. So I think that's another reason these things are so fleshed out and you guys put so much effort into making them look almost filmic in their presentation is because these eventually would become great way to pitch movies. Um, and that was the long game that Stan had in mind. Right. So some of the stuff that we're talking about, Jim, I wonder if you click on behind the scenes, are there some shots of the sets and the, the photo shoots that we're talking about? Of Sort of, yeah. I mean, the videos that we created for these did cover those. And I, and I do have them here, but they're pretty low quality from, yeah. you know, in today's world. Like I said, the, the, the first behind the scenes was all on the, the CD-ROMs for Creature Features, but... Mm -hmm. Once we got to the web stuff, the Realm of the Claw, Mutant Earth, and Extreme Gargoyles started out being password protected. So you got the passwords on your trading cards with the box. So you had to actually open, you know, buy the box and open and be able to see the trading cards on the back. So you couldn't just like, you know, get this cool content for free. And um, once blood wolves came along we decided to open it all up for free and this was the page that was created for that so each of these would launch a behind the scenes so i can start with the realm of the claw so the first section is a video which won't launch anything from here but this is where you could see your behind the scenes stuff <laughs> dialogue um, <laughs> yes, dial up, right. So it just showed how long ago it was. Brownie face. <laughs> Brownie face, you're right. Is that what that is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, like, you know, Terry and I were just working our butts off creating content for this. Um, I think, Terry, you did all these backgrounds, all the bricks and all that stuff. Yeah, you? I have a recollection of a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> My idea for this was I wanted to start with this cool yin yang of Swana and Terra, the good and bad cats. That's so cool. That was created by uh, Crash. And then I just kind of stylized it for this. But Terry did all the rock looks to this. And, and what I wanted to do was have this on the wall. And then when you navigate, each transition would be something a little different. So the video had the swiping over thing for the gallery. We just had a big zoom thing. Mm -hmm. And now each character, you could flick through and you could see a little behind the scenes of the artist and stand and going through different processes. What? Great. Great shot. So again, it just to underscore how much Stan was really letting artists run with it, just to give them each their own little behind the scenes featurette and bio reinforces yep. what Stan was trying to do here, which was give them each a chance to take something start to finish. Well, and again, like we were talking about on the Stan Winston studio website, the fans, really, they wanted to know all of this. Yeah. They, they wanted photos they wanted details and right and how cool I, is it that these were the same guys that were creating all their favorite right. movie cat that was important to stand to really show the link that you're you're getting action figures from artists who worked on your favorite movies and co-created your favorite characters mm -hmm. and these are now original characters that you've got in your hands yeah here's the 3d spin the spins, yeah That's so i think it was my idea to do this we might have discussed this a little bit. Back in those days, really all you had was kind of quick time VR things. And I talked to our Flash developer guy and I said, hey, can we do something like that? And he said, absolutely. We could do an interactive thing. So we shot each character, yeah. I don't know how many times here, like on a turntable and, and loaded it into the Flash so that you can spin it. And it really just in that direction. You couldn't do it in every direction right? like you can nowadays. But so not only could you see your character for that particular artist, but all of them. 
which would entice you to maybe want to buy it. Now, and these are not touched up at all. These are how they looked. Those are the actual stands that came in the packaging with, with the character. A yeah, cool snake kind of yep. chain. Yeah. I want to say that each frame had to be cut out from the background, though. Ooh. Someone, right. probably me, had to painstakingly yep. pixel by pixel cut him up. <laughs> right. They had to have the transparent background to work with this. But, you know, I think also on these, because of the, the work that the studio had done on Small Soldiers, that was very informative of, you know, we wanted them to be really cool action figures that you could create all kinds of interesting poses. So mm -hmm. joints and all that, all those points of articulation were figured out and part of the design and, you know, to make it look more elegant, the artist would figure out the armor and cool weaponry and things like that that could sort of blend into some of the points of articulation to, you, you know, give it not such a clunky feel. There was a, just a ton of work being done on every stage of the creation of these. Now, you guys mentioned this was a full-time job, and it really was. I mean, this took over the studio. It was, a, a lot of it was during a, a slower time at the shop. It was between some jobs, and yes. this was a way to keep people working. And it became a toy shop for a good period of time um, yes. where everyone was dedicating their efforts to this. And I know that some people uh, were not happy about that. Some people were like, wait, are we just doing toys now? What's going on? Where's the movies? Mm -hmm. um, do you guys recall that time at the studio when, when, it, when it was slow and it was all about the toys? I was okay with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because we, we were the lucky ones that were working. And, um, <laughs> but, but Terminator 3 did come in while we had duty on toy packaging and website duties. And true. I remember Jim and I, putting a lot of late nights in trying to get the Arnold makeups done and get the packaging off to the printer. <laughs> you know? So yeah. were you guys working with budgets or was it get the job done? I mean, we, we know Stan from other ways he lived, you know, in the personal life, not necessarily in the business, but was it like a budget or was it like you went to work, got done what you needed to get done? I think there was a budget in there. Uh, he didn't seem you know, too concerned. I'm sure overly concerned. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, all, it was all getting done. And, and, you know, like Terry said, just reminded me, we were designing every aspect, the, the, the car, what do they call it? The card with the plastic bubble on the front of it. What do right. they call it? And the, the back, the front had to have art, the back yeah. had to have art. No. I mean, we, 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 went we had to lay out the barcodes, everything. Every detail was being done where the hook okay. would be that it would hang on the on the, the display shelf. All the taglines. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we had to make sure they hung correctly. So you had to place the hook part right so it wouldn't hang crooked. Exactly. We had to do tests uh, on, on paper mock-ups. And yeah, it was I, it's such a tremendous amount of work. I can't even, you know, when I think back on all this stuff, and it's really cool. And I, it's like a bummer that, you know, across the board, you just don't get to see any of this. Uh, yeah. Websites, the toys, you know, if you if you go on eBay, you can still find them, I suppose. But um, but, but every, uh, as far as the website went, every, every new toy line, it, it followed the same sort of format, artist bio, click for the character, but each site, it was like a brand new site almost for each toy line. So yeah. we wanted it to navigate differently. Right. Realm of the Claw had its own things with foliage and brick walls, but then Mutant Earth was completely different. You know? let's, let's check those out, uh, Jim, if you can. So this is the, the main page that launched for Mutant Earth. And we, we just used some of the uh, backgrounds that were created, I think, for the actual track video. You know, all that dirt and the crashed ship there, the, the Stan Winston digital launching video of track. So um, we used some of that and I just created some sky backgrounds and stuff. All sorts of uh, 
<laughs> 3D effects and flash right there. So shall we launch the dial up? <laughs> we had the old drive-in theater there and then um, the artist bio. So I was practicing in flash, like how can I create all sorts of neat effects? And I did this circular thing wrapping around John here at the artist. And, and then we just scroll through his behind the scenes credits and all that stuff. Now it says artist bio, is that because it's for a particular figure? Cause I know John didn't do all of, all of these. We're on the track figures. Oh, yeah, we're just in the track that. figure now. Okay. Right. Got it. So for this one, we zoom in on the trash Jeep window and it becomes the screen that we see. And, and this design pick to do this, this thing, there's a window on the side and there's John and Stan. Is that you guys? You guys didn't know web design. Am I wrong here? I mean, no, I weren't you guys a, a bunch of smart stuff. people working for Stan, like everybody else there? And it's like, let's figure out how to make it happen. And you guys had to figure yeah. out how to build a website. You didn't have web talent, did you? I had a really. little background. You did? Um, for my own website, yeah. But I'm, you know, I learned Flash just for that. And okay. I actually learned a lot more working on this kind of stuff because. You know, you get creative, just like anything at Stan's. We were, all, we're always pushing the envelope to try and find the, the newest, coolest thing that we could do. So this is just shows some of the behind the scenes of creating this figure. And uh, Styles, were you writing all this text that we're seeing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, basically any any section that needed everything from coming up with character names to captions, to the little intro thing that I just saw at the beginning of the Mutant Earth video. Mm -hmm. I remember writing that. So it was element by element as, as we went. Mm -hmm. if, I, if there I, was a page I, and it needed something, we would drop it in. Sorry. As a screenwriter, is there a story somewhere within these toy lines that you've sat and pondered for years or absolutely not? Just curious. I, I mean, there was a lot about the, you know, Mutant Earth in particular when I was there and working on it. I just, I love these characters. You know, if you're any kind of writer and you're looking at these characters, you do start to daydream of what they would look like. And, and everything was so visual with the backdrops and the photos and you know the imagery that the digital departments were coming up with you definitely could envision the film of good guys bad guys post-apocalyptic wasteland but like this character gallows everything had to have a cool spec had to put a z on it right z is golden can't just put a regular but i forget who did this sculpture but adding the little mutant vulture on his shoulder mm -hmm. joey orozco right and i noticed there's an interesting mesh over each of these figures uh these were not computer modeled figures so that must have been added after the fact do you recall that jim i don't know where i came up with it i was just like let's have a neat rollover where it's where it looks 3d mm -hmm. so i just kind of traced it all that tracing was done in flash actually uh, Terry, you were about to weigh in on that. Do you have a recollection? Oh, just what Jim was uh, just said. But I did have a funny story about Styles. He he came up to the studio one day, to the design room rather, and was, you know, he's been coming up with different creature names, different <laughs> world names. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this stuff. You're like, you're like, dude, I'm done. I need <laughs> names for two more worlds. I can't yeah. do anything. <laughs> And I think I, I one of them was named. I'm like, okay, I'll just how about how about Zeeth? <laughs> like Z I E T H E. <laughs> it's like great, done. <laughs> done. Like how many worlds can one man create? Ugh. Right. I know we were we were running at I mean, like even back on that one character, Horg the Dismantler. <laughs> like why did he get a special 
cool <laughs> extra not, tag. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he got his job description added. The right. guys, we didn't get the job descriptions on the other guys. That right. might have even was, been an instance yeah, where we had a people, we so. had a brainstorm sheet of names, and we had the name Horg, and maybe <laughs> all, a different name, the Dismantler. And it's like, here's an idea. <laughs> Put them together. Boom. And it's Horg the Dismantler. <laughs> Yeah, he gets, um, Nobody um, forgot to remove it, and it just stuck. The dismantler definitely feels like a stand touch. So good, I've got to say. Uh, you yeah. need anything dismantled? Yes. All work. It'll help you. Yeah. And there's Track, the man who ties it all together. That's with cool. His big, with his big old arm. Mm -hmm. um, Super cool. Excellent. We have we now seen uh, the turnarounds on all of these mutant earths? I think we have. Yeah, but well, let's go to blood walls, I guess. Let's do it. Blood walls. Wasn't that a Chris, Chris Swift favorite? Well, this one zooms in too. This is great. So this is the the werewolf line. Mm -hmm. That's right. Track is hunting werewolves. So we got the the castle in the background, and. Terry's logo, you know, elements that were used for some of the trading cards. And we just, we were just trying to reuse as much stuff that we could. So let's go to the behind the scenes. So once again, they built this awesome set of the stairway inside yeah. of a uh, castle. And um, we just animated the fire there on the walls. And each of these characters now has highlight so we can click on them and i did my little zoom effect there and now we just click through totally different as you said each website or each of these feels totally different stylistically this is a ton of work yeah well and because we were doing them in you know series there was a, you know, you would build off the learning curve of what you'd done on the previous one. Mm -hmm. So even though you, you had some new techniques and, and some new methodology, you knew what you'd done before, but you visually, you knew you needed to change it up. And were you guys getting more ambitious with each successive toy line website? In terms of the techniques and the technology you were using? Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. You, you know, I think when you're just searching to do something new and different, sometimes, you know, maybe you bite off a little bit more than you can chew and suddenly you created a problem for, but we, you know, we got through it. And I mean, it's just this picture alone is just so cool with all the figures. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's make sure we get a click on each one of them. I love this guy, Wolf. Yeah, he's so one of did this one too. You got to do two of these characters. And a lot of these were based on Simon Bisley designs. That's right. Is that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that um, anywhere in those concept designs in the in these pages? Oh, there yeah, we right go. There. Right there. There's one. Super cool. And it even says there, go back, you see what it says? Yeah. Simon's designs have inspired many of the figures in Stan Winston Creature Lines. Yep. And look how close the realization is. Yeah. I mean, it's great. It's Trevor's, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I mean, we had a lot of fun doing all this stuff, but I kind of got a little jealous <laughs> I didn't get to do my own figure <laughs> but we had ownership of so much other stuff that you know I think it, it satisfied me at least well didn't you end up uh, participating greatly in the book after this oh yeah we wasn't did. that kind of the genesis of the of the putting you you know in a position on, on that book or, or no am I remembering that wrong too yeah you know well, the, the book was just an all-encompassing triumph, you know, I mean, everybody got credits and everybody got pictures and, and, and we were all interviewed in the book. And, and it was just, a, that was a, a tremendous job in itself. 
but that's not what this is about. <laughs> that's that's once again in a whole other yeah. behind the scenes we could that's do. That's a whole other Zoom. Yeah, um, exactly. So this one is again, was this Joey's again? Right. Was, mm -hmm. yeah. And and you know, these names, I guess some of them were taken from yeah. historical names, right, Styles? Yeah, I mean, we would just kind of pull up everything that had to do with werewolves and obviously scientific term for werewolf is lycanthropy. So we, we were just trying to use root words and based on the time period, if it was medieval, if it was something like this, just give it a cool flavor. You know, of course, with wolf, you've got to do the two dots over the- And a V, two. and a yeah. V. Yeah, Nuts. you're done. And you just got to add a Z at the end and you'd be golden. <laughs> Wolves. <laughs> and what's cool is like, you know, every each werewolf is completely different. Yes. They just had entirely different designs. Very different. Yet stuff. you'd still look at them and you go, that's a werewolf. Yep. And these toys were actually made. This is one of the, the, the ones that was created. Oh, there we go. There's the collection. Oh, that shows the oh wow. That's great. And you can see those gorgeous, the gorgeous packaging that you guys were so invested in creating as well. Yep. I mean, so much work. Well, would that have been the back of a trading card that we're seeing there? The Let's trading start. cards are stuck here and the front of the cards are stuck on the, uh, uh -huh. they had a little insert that they slid into the corners, kind of nestled in. And there's a sticker on the thing saying, you know, check out their trading cards. Mm -hmm. And then on the back, had tons of information. And, uh, you know, Styles wrote up some really neat backgrounds on, on the characters. And... So I've always been curious about that. Again, that, that through line through everything. The cards to the thing to the thing. The messaging to go to the web. Whatever that whole process was. Did yeah. somebody input on that? Or was that you guys thinking up ways to be creative to get users excited about having you know a card or a whatever it is was that you guys or did some outside entity instruct you on i think we were looking at a lot of what was going on at the time whether it was you know trading cards trading art cards were kind of big at the time there were a lot of things happening at the same time so action figures behind the scenes stuff people were just starting to develop websites to this sort of level of detail and th with Stan, we were all, we were trying to pack in as much as possible. We wanted the action figure to be a really cool value. And beyond just the figure, like the photography and art, something that you could collect. And the idea was if there were multiple lines of action figures and trading cards, it would be a whole, I mean, it would be a whole set that you'd eventually have if you got them all. And then, Jim and Terry, you guys could probably speak more to this. Another whole layer of all of this was, you know, you're you're talking before social media. There was a there was a Stan Winston Creatures message board. Oh, that, well, it's actually yeah, there. The well, forums thing. I don't think it does it lead anywhere, Jim. It used to, but you know, all those links are are gone. Now. And so yeah. there it is. There's the link forum. That's what you're talking about, right, Styles? Yeah. Do you recall were people active on that? I, I don't oh, think yeah. big time. You know, I mean, you got to think before anything like Facebook or any ways that people could get to get, you know, who were interested in the common subject. Uh, this was the forum was also a great way to make announcements, release dates, tease images for upcoming things. So a lot faster than um uh, making an update to the website which was time consuming mm -hmm. to come up with images and graphics for a, a news announcement it was it was much easier to just post something quickly on the forum and say hey something's coming up and check this date and here's a teaser image and then just start to see the discussion so it was also a really cool way to get feedback in real time mm -hmm. as things were happening from the hardcore fans and a lot of that a lot of that feedback is useful obviously we we use it all the time now focus groups and things like that so this was a way to sort of have our own version uh, in house stream gargoyles which character do we want um, uh, let's do vorak yeah let's check them out 
and a whole different thing. You got a book with the extreme gargoyles. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually rendered that in 3D. Did a frame by frame thing so that we can load it into Flash and have the book open up. It was, it was kind of a fun thing. And I think uh, Terry did all the artwork for it to make it look like his old book. Am I right? I think so. And, and didn't we have like a hallway you kind of walked down for this one? Yeah, and, the, and there's the gallery. art painting on the walls, and there it is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Yay! My memory is still working. Yeah, the the hallway had like the dark background so that we could put the um, nice white text there and make everything stand out. Or Simon Bisley art mm -hmm. there. Now, I remember this line in particular, the wings was a whole element of getting the wings to be really cool. And it made it tricky for the packaging because it added, right. you know, this, this width to all the characters. So I forget what the final packaging looked like, but I remember it was a factor of trying to figure it out. Did you guys catch that? The little gargoyle flies in? Like yes. Yeah. Right. You know, we were always looking for little touches to add to these things. And this is uh, one of the cool background sets that the guys built yeah. um, for all the different elements. And each of these little videos has uh, descriptions, you know, so each character had a concept design video and then the sculpting. And then finally, we got a little recognition for the sets and the packaging. Yeah. So we, all, we got interviewed for that. It was kind of fun. Oh, <laughs> it was neat. Let's see. There's Jason sculpting the towers there. Yeah. Oh, and then, yeah, the, the bio. So, look at a little gargoyle on the wall that. You just grab the little gargoyle. So... Uh, that's, a funny... <laughs> that's a funny one. So fun. Just looking for ways to make it different. Oh, it's so different. It really is great. And this stood out for everybody that saw this website. We all did. Everyone remembers it. Yeah. Or whoever encountered it it was very unique it's it's fun seeing these again yeah. this was neat because that background there that just swiped up was the same background we used for the back of all the blister packs all the boxes mm -hmm. um, and that was that was a whole to do because we really only had about four different building setups and we locked the camera off and just kind of moved everything around and then composited all those different images going way back into one image. It was really, you know, we just, we, we had so much fun doing different things with these toy lines, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was work, but it, it was really fun too. Yeah, I yeah. love the turnarounds, these are great. You think of worse work. Yeah, right. Yeah, the wings were, I remember, an issue for these guys like how how do we make them work like i think this set had double joints so there are joints here that folded down so that they would fit inside of the packaging let's see hmm. rack and i think this was the last set to be made I think that's right. Yeah, correct. Blood Wolves was the last Blood one. Wolves. Okay. To be sold. Yeah. To be sold. Yeah. I, I think Realm of the Claw had six figures in the collection. And that was the biggest. Mm -hmm. And then Mutant Earth was five. Mm -hmm. And Gargoyles were five. But then I think the Werewolves were down to four, just, to, you know, to move some resources around. Once again, these are cool. Like, you know, you recognize them as gargoyles that might have been on buildings and stuff mm -hmm. and, you know, brought to life and they're all different. But the references, I'm sure, were taken from lots of historical things. And um, I think, once again, Simon Bisley did a lot of these, these sketches. Mm -hmm. yeah. This one's that. What's the one thing? What is that? hot oil that you can pour down on the villagers. The invaders, the villagers. <laughs> yeah. 
This was did Shane. Shane do this one? Who did this one? Shane. Yeah. Great. Remember that. <laughs> I think we Great. saw it There you go. That's well, now that we've seen all these behind the scenes, let's return, if you would, back to the home page. And let's just quickly pop into these links we have not yet seen. So this okay, is the same, same link as if you were to click this page, but we just had a big one there. And you can look these to go to preview pages, but oh, there you go. Hmm. Pop-ups. So here's here's a preview of what you might see inside each of these comics. Super cool. And what was the uh, fan stuff link? I forgot. Um, Over there on the left. Oh, fan oh. stuff. Fan yeah. Stuff. So for here. Oh yeah. Register with us. You can type in feedback. <laughs> wow. We got our FAQ. Okay, so there you go. This there is it. the, that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. Go back to that. I mean, that's it in a nutshell. Just that, that slide. Our goal at Stan Winston Creatures is to bring you never before seen characters. We've been coming up with our own worlds and stories for years. And we thought the toy company was a perfect way to introduce these amazing concepts. That is the genesis of it. it. Yeah. Those, those words feel familiar. Yeah. You probably wrote them. I did. <laughs> How many series? That's right, 12. Well, four were produced, and then there were prototypes for another, gosh. So, Jim, do you remember what, after Robot Revolt and the Four Horsemen, do you remember even some of the areas that were being thought of after that? One was aliens. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have those sculpted. And then there was also... I don't, it was like, they, it was called Dark World, but it was a mixture of different stuff, like really cool characters. One was like a, a sick, crazy clown. and um, Like horror. Like, I do remember that, yeah. yeah. Like pure horror. That's that's awesome. I think I have images of that up in here. Uh, dark World. Uh, here's Dark World. Oh, yeah. Scary. Look at yeah. That. <laughs> so they really didn't have much to do with each other per se so it would have been up to you styles to, to link <laughs> them into some kind of storyline now this is interesting because the logo had changed to stan winston toys was that a discussion that was being had yeah yeah this was just a, a concept i think that i was throwing around and mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. I really don't remember exactly why. Uh, this was after cool. my time too. Yep. So that's Dark World. And then we also had, uh, let's see. I mean, do you realize the exclusive content that we are we are seeing right now? Uh, <laughs> oh, this is the banners from Comic-Con. Never before seen. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, those were great. These are the Blood Wolves cards. These are the trading card fronts. I love this one. Awesome. That's great, too. This was, a, I think, just for a banner. Mm -hmm. And there's the uh, oh, yeah. translate one. So then each of the Dark World characters. And these never made it past maquette stage. The... Right. Well, I, I mean, you know, obviously we, we did all these setups for them for a uh, possibility of, of what mm -hmm. would come. But... So this is an example of a great photo that we just enhanced with extra lighting and stuff mm -hmm. in Photoshop. So. I think I might have added the, the rays of light on that one. Right. Yeah, the, the set for Gargoyles is crazy. 
Yeah, that was some really neat stuff made. And right. All our mutant earth characters. These are the trading cards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. The oh, dismantler. Yeah. There he is. <laughs> In his shop. <laughs> Just dismantling stuff. Yeah. Whatever you need. Vacuums, I'll dismantle them. <laughs> Translate. Uh, um, here's our. Oh, yeah. Is this robot ruffle? Robot yes. ruffle, yeah. Also, easily designs. Razorback. We need more umlauts. <laughs> A couple more Z's. Torque. I'm loving the font here, by the way. Yeah. That's great. Right, so I was just looking for anything different. Yeah. That's their high great. school photo. <laughs> this was Crash Line. Ah. There was a gigantic rendering that Crash did in the hallway of that. Mm -hmm. I remember just stands original a couple time. times a day staring at that thing. Yeah, yep. gorgeous. Yeah, and that's that's Stan's original sketch. I think he actually did he base that on? No, he drew that before John uh, sculpted the figure, didn't he? I think he did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, he did. That's that's what inspired John's sculpt. Yeah, and then these are uh, I believe the trip out. Oh, there's now Jim. Go go back to that previous one because that that was one where you guys added hair, right? right. We right. basically had photos of the action figures, and we we painted out all the seams, painted fur into them, enhanced all the teeth and eyes, and but it's basically I mean, a figure you're looking at. Yeah, I remember how cool that hair, because that was sort of new, being able to do a hair effect like that in, in Photoshop. Well, it was just all hand painted. Right. Strand by strand. So, yeah, it wasn't a filter or anything. <laughs> no, it, it added a lot of, like, cool realism to see these figures with that hair treatment. Yeah. Gosh, just imagining you hair by hair, Terry. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, Lord. It was fun. These are gorgeous, though. Uh, yeah, so these, cool. these were the big posters we gave away. Right, and these are the sculptures that were based on the drawings. At Stan. Right, right, right. So uh, Shane sculpted this one. We well, have, that, we have that in the other story. room. We have both yep. these figures in the other room. Yep. Yeah, those are a good size, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they were big. So, so, Jimmy, is there anything left on the site that we haven't clicked? Um. The rest of the FAQ, and then let's see, we had the purchase page. So this showed mm -hmm. things that they could get, and where or other things that they can get from us. Mm -hmm. so we had uh, all the things that were through Sideshow, and then Cinemaquette did the, the large Terminator. I don't know if these links these links probably are no longer good since they're very many years old, but the sites are still there. Yeah. And then our forum, which goes nowhere because right. there's no forum anymore. What was the links one? Oh, right. One of these might still work, I think. I, I think I clicked through these and like some of the interviews might still be there. These are all just articles on the toy lines. Oh, okay. So those are links to outside websites that had done coverage of... Yeah. Hey, it looks like Horg the Dismantler got his own spotlight over yeah. at the Raving Toy Maniac. <laughs> Is it still there? I can't click it. Oh. Flash. Flash won't won't work anymore. Okay, for those of you uh, watching this video, go ahead and see if you can't find that Horg the Dismantler. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then this was the last thing that goes to the teaser trailer that. Uh, was done for
that video was pretty groundbreaking also at the time. Was that all photo shot? Like, how do you, how did, was that done? Aaron Sims did a lot of that on, uh, oh, Soft Dimage. Okay. Soft Dimage. Okay. Ah, okay. Got it. Which is now defunct. Right. Yeah, it was just very, again, ahead of its time. Everything was always just cutting edge, trying new things, and it was welcomed. It was such a, a great spirit. Not sure if you guys felt it when you were there going through it, but for us on the outside looking at it, it's remarkable to be able to have this much fun trying things out. It's great to see all this stuff again. I, di I didn't see him in there, but I remember uh, Chris Swift was shooting um, basically stop motion animation with the figures in the sets. Sure. Remember that, Jim? When yeah, for the behind the scenes stuff, I guess, right? probably and we yeah. we did a couple and then then i actually ended up helping them out on a few of them too but i don't think they ever got onto the site i don't know, I I know scour, the, those scour the archives for those i have to see the stop motion that would be yeah it was it was fun like he was just using a regular camera and shooting stills and he could he loaded the stills into a program that animated oh, really them. that's I, cool. I really don't remember that yeah Maybe Stan but, gave it the thumbs down. I don't know. Well, yeah, I think it was probably <laughs> speaking of budgets. <laughs> I was like, okay, guys. Uh, well, guys, I mean, Jimmy, I, I think you've covered pretty much everything on the site. Yeah, at this point, you've clicked on any everything that's there. Oh, here, here's something fun. This is a concept, an earlier concept for the for the website that we were just playing around with. So it's slightly different and we, you know, before we got into more heavy design stuff, but I don't think. Oh. <laughs> you remember that, Terry? I do. And I think you did all those lightning bolt things that when you. Uh, probably. <laughs> so this was an earlier iteration. Yeah, it was just like a quick, like, hey, what can we do with the site? And it was like to show Stan that you know, we had the potential to, to really produce some neat stuff. I think I hand painted all that pipe work though. And that ended up, I think, being used, right? That, yeah, I think so. The animated wheel stuff was changed, but. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, you guys totally took it to a new level with the, with the next site you built though. Mm -hmm. But this at least got you started. Yeah. So that was it. I mean, we just, and Beast Lords was the uh, original name for. That's right. Home of a Claw. We, we had to change. We had the whole logo all finished too. I know, it, right? What, wasn't that all turned into HBO, the creature feature, the spider and the other one? Am I yeah, wrong? those were the, the yeah. figures that were created after the uh, creature features movies were made. Yeah. 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 yeah well, so that's, that's all I did. None of this other stuff is clickable but um but this was just like a proof of concept type thing like hey this is where we can go with this well well guys being a little bit on the outside looking in at what everyone at the studio was doing uh it was incredible to see how you guys were pushing uh toys and and, and expanding what what was possible and and of course this all came from stan's frustration with not getting his IP made. And this was how he figured you guys could finally make it happen. This was going to be the stepping stone to movies and all of this other stuff. And though that didn't materialize, you know, the creativity speaks for itself. I mean, you guys created so much amazing stuff um, during this adventure. Do you guys have any final thoughts to share about your experience working on this? Man, you know, I... I mean, we said this before, but we just, there's so much work done on this. Uh, and it's kind of fun to go through this and especially to get the feedback of, of Styles and Terry, because um, there's so many things that we went through that I don't even remember. And, you know, they brought, brought up some really fun things. And, you know, it's just, it, it, everything, everything we did, I think for, for Stan was an honor for me. And, uh, you know, this was especially because uh, during that time, movies and, and commercials were, were kind of slow, which enabled us to put an awful lot of time and effort into creating all this great stuff. So. 
Yeah, I would just say, I think for me, I think the, the three of us being in San Diego with Stan, having these displays, having the posters, having the track uh, teaser running on the, you know, big flat screen behind us, being there for four days and literally seeing thousands and thousands of people come through the booth, meeting Stan, asking questions about the action figures. That was where, you know, when you're in the studio and you're putting all this stuff together, you're behind, you're behind the scenes. You're kind of doing it all in secret in the, in the, you know, the studio that was there in Van Nuys, but to be able to take, take the show on the road and have Stan there and interact with the fans and people who are movie fans, fans of Stan, fans of the original artwork that was being done. Those four days of being there, you know, from the moment the show opened to when it closed and meeting all those people, that, that to me was when, um, all the work that we'd been doing really, uh, we were able to present it to the people who wanted to see it and who were interested. And it was, uh, that was a great, that was a great experience. We were all, we were all there together doing it. Yeah, I agree with uh, what Jim and Styles are both saying that uh, it was an amazing experience, especially as far as just being in that in the studio space where it was all happening it was just so inspiring as, as an artist and and um, to see it all come together in San Diego like Style said and and yes Stan signed every poster like we ran out of posters <laughs> it was, yeah. and just you could just feel the energy just that people got excited to see him I mean I, I just had a smile on my face the whole time it was just a ton of work putting it all together but it never felt like it because you know you'd take a little break from what you were doing and and I would walk around and check out what the sculptors were doing and seeing what you know Trevor and Joey are putting together with their figures and but um, yeah the whole experience is 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 was just great and I'm glad I was part of it <laughs> well thank you so much guys for sharing your recollections we know it's been a long time is a long time ago um and uh, it, it's just great to fill in some blanks. And uh, when, when this is all cut together, I'm sure hardcore fans are gonna love seeing uh, all the work that went into the Stan Winston Creatures toy line, as well as, as, well as the comics. Uh, so thank you for watching this. Uh, we hope you've, you've enjoyed seeing this, this look at uh, all this original IP that came out of Stan Winston Studio and uh, hearing from three of the gentlemen responsible. So thank you guys for being with us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Matt.